All right, Biggie. We're back. Be built by Brozer. Yep. And we have Sil again. That's right. Well, we're going to be seeing a lot of Sil. I know. I love that. Because uh, I don't have to be in front of the camera anymore. As I've mentioned before <laughs> and uh, posted on some social media, I'm working with Sil uh, for his shows in 2020. The first show is going to be the Indie Pro. So that's what we're working towards right now. Uh, and today we're actually going to be training triceps for you guys. And what we're going to do is we've already done quads. We're going to do triceps today. And since you guys love to see like pretty much every body part, yeah. over the next few weeks we'll actually do a workout for every body part with Silvio so you can see what we're doing. Nice. And then uh, at the end of the show we're also going to do some Ask Merlin questions which I look forward to. So, uh, so, so this is like the second week full time that you've been doing this kind of right. program. That's How's right. it going? It's really going, going real great. Uh, I love the way my body's responding also. The training uh, part of it uh, has kind of uh, very basic to you know, really dig, dipping into the muscles and then uh, pulling out a lot of uh, uh, tissues that could, you know, have been resting. I feel it, and I uh, really look forward to a great development. Are you sore? I'm sore, actually. <laughs> you know, but, you know the, the good part of it is better to be sore than being painful. I know. Yeah, to be sore, you know very well that you are really touching the muscles. It's growth. That is yeah, growth. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. So we some triceps yep. and ask Merlin. It's good to have you with us still again. <laughs> All right, man. Right. Okay guys, so what we're starting off with on triceps today is actually a superset. First exercise is the tricep push out using a short straight bar. It's laying back on an incline bench uh, set to about 55, 60 degrees. And as you can see, he's not pushing down, he's pushing outward. So this is really like a hybrid movement uh, between a push down and a push out or a push down and an extension. Really, really good for building mass and the entire tricep. Very strict movement and also a very good alternative to using a barbell. Now he's gonna carefully get around here. Drop it down to 50 still. And what he's gonna do the second half of the superset where he's gonna do a pure tricep push down using the same bar, the same grip. But now the body is angled forward. So it's a completely different way of pushing down. The central nervous system and the muscles have to deal with something different in the superset. So even though the movements look similar, they're not similar to the body. He's going for a complete and total pump here. He's always going for full range of motion to the top, as you can see, getting that stretch and all the way down to the bottom for a full contraction, looking to improve the mass and the separation of the triceps. Great way to start off a tri workout. Okay guys, so now that I got still nice and warmed up from that superset, we're gonna go into a very basic movement here on the Smith machine, close grip bench press, but what we're doing is we have the stopper set so that it's a few inches above his chest. What this is doing is helping to take some of the chest out of the movement and really just doing a tricep lockout. So we're really hitting the triceps a lot harder than if he was bringing the bar all the way down to the chest. Of course, you could also see his grip is a little closer than he would with a normal bench press. So again, that also affects the triceps. He's using a good control negative to get to the bottom. He's not bouncing off the bottom and then he's using pure tricep power to push to the top and lock out. This is such a good move of building mass. I can tell you that this might be a good alternative to doing the regular close grip bench press because of those lockouts. It hits the triceps really hard. Okay guys, this is one of my favorite movements for hitting the long head of the triceps. Most people do it with dumbbells. I like to do it here on the cable because it provides constant tension throughout the movement and it also provides an amazing contraction at the top, especially the way he's doing it. Not sure if you could see it, but he's actually angling his body away from the working arm a little bit, which allows him to better work against gravity. And since his elbow is not straight up and down, it's pointing at an angle, he can get a better contraction at the top. Like I said, this works the long head of the tricep, the belly of the tricep, gives you a much better front double bicep shot. Of course, he's gonna do it here on the other arm as well. Give this a try if you're looking to build that long head of the tricep and the dumbbells aren't getting it done. Come on, Sale. Squeeze him out. Squeeze it out. Come on. Get it. Come on. Uh. Hi, Merlin. You get any good question this week? Yep. Two good questions that I wanted to answer from Facebook. First question was um, from a friend of ours, Antonio Pandolfo, who's actually a photographer. 
Uh, and uh, he wanted to know, he said, I've always had respect for and wanted to do what you guys do. Is it possible for me uh, at age 36 to start to bodybuild and then eventually compete? No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. No. Sorry, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. Um, Bye, Toto. So basically my answer to that is yes, you can do it. But here's the thing. Obviously, when you start at age 36, it's a lot harder than when you start at 26 or your early 20s like a lot of people do. Uh, because at this point in time, um, hormonal profiles is not as you know good as it was in the 20s. You're not releasing as much testosterone or growth hormone um, and things that you know help you progress. However, that does not mean you can't start at age 36. I know a lot of uh, guys and girls who started around that age. Uh, actually, even to be quite honest, my girlfriend Kim, she didn't start training uh, for. Uh, in bodybuilding or in you know training with weights until she was about 36 she was on stage a year later uh, and you know and is competing now so that's a good example she, so she yeah. did it you yeah. know and um, and she's a pretty she's done pretty well she's won some shows and um, yeah, but she's got you as a coach that was the other <laughs> thing that I was going to say the other thing I was going to say is is that you know it can be done now the thing is is that since you're starting at age 36 you don't have the time to make a lot of the errors that we were able to make when we were younger, you know, overtraining or not eating right or whatever. Because even when you're younger, you can make a lot of mistakes and you can still grow uh, just because your body's so ready for it. Um, you don't really have time for that. So now, like, you really kind of, when you go into it, you're going to need to go into it um, properly right from the beginning in order to make the progress that you want if you want to step on stage. So I would say, you know, hiring a coach, uh, a good coach in general, just to set you, at least set you off in the right direction in terms of you know a good diet, a good training program that you can progress on, somebody to work with that can keep you accountable and make sure that you're doing all the things that are right for your age um, to make sure you get started correctly and progress correctly as you go along. So you know, basically my answer is yes, you can definitely do it. It's been done many times before. There's a lot of people these days, especially turning their turning pro in their 40s competing at high level in their 40s who didn't start into their 30s, but generally they have some type of help, they have a coach, which is obviously a very big thing these days. So I would recommend uh, that you do something like that, hire a coach in order to progress, but there's absolutely no reason why you can't start at 36, make tremendous progress, uh, and definitely one day step on stage, uh, even within a few years if you do everything right. So uh, I would say go for it, Antonio. I mean, there's no reason not to. So. Then you can hire someone to take a picture of you. And then, <laughs> since you're the photographer, you can actually have, yeah, you look so good, you'll have to hire a photographer That's that right. can take pictures of you. So, right. uh, go Very for cool. it. Very cool. All right. Okay, so this is from my client, Max, who uh, he's asked probably more questions than anybody has. I was going to say, it's been, it's been a few days. But, uh, but this is a good question. I like this question. Um, so, you want to know, so he said, when, when, you know, when I give, I give him his, all of his workouts. So, he said, when you give me my workouts, and generally like when something like rack deadlifts is the first exercise uh, in his back uh, program for the day, uh, he says that all the pulling movements like pull downs and rows that he does after the rack deadlifts, he's always way stronger than if he doesn't start with the rack deadlifts. He wants to know, you know, why is it that I find that I'm stronger? Uh, you know, what's the reasoning behind this? What's happening? So. Um, it's really actually a good question because there really is a reason behind this. First thing I'm going to say is, you know, I don't know if you know too much about the sport of baseball, but I was a baseball player when I was younger, and one of the things that we would always do before we get up to bat is we'd always grab like two or three baseball bats, and we'd swing like three baseball bats because we wanted to feel the weight of like three baseball bats um, versus one baseball bat, and so that we would swing with it, and then by the time you drop the two bats, you'd, you'd, the bat would feel so much lighter. Um, now part of that is a psychological thing, but part of it actually is physiological. There's something called post-activation in the muscle, and this is what's actually happening. Um, I'll give you another example. Um, there's something called post-activation supersets as opposed to pre-exhaust supersets. Now pre-exhaust superset, you do an isolation exercise and then you follow it with a compound exercise. With post-activation, you actually start with a compound, a heavy compound exercise, and then you go to an isolation exercise. And what actually happens is, is that when you do a very, very heavy compound exercise, um, the nervous system 
um, gets a lot of stimulation uh, and along with the nervous system, st system stimulation also the, the fast switch muscle fibers get activated so it's almost like you're sort of like adding a turbocharger to your muscles after doing that compound exercise and then when you go to the isolation exercise the body is actually able to get more reps than it normally could than if you didn't do that heavy compound exercise first so what we're doing when we're doing the rack deadlifts first, especially because this is an exercise where you can handle tremendous poundages, um, way more than you can handle in rows, pull downs of any kind, you're actually getting that post-activation effect. So it's like you're setting up the nervous system, you're setting up the muscle fibers to be able to handle and be more efficient with the exercise that come after. So this is exactly the reason why you find this is happening. Now it doesn't mean that you're supposed to do this with every single solitary workout, um, but I'm just giving you the reasoning by what, by why this happens and why sometimes I will do post-activation supersets as opposed to pre-exhaust supersets, which a lot of people do. So post-activation is real, and uh, this is why you're finding that you're strong after doing those rap deadlifts. Awesome, good question.